using the bPython Enhanced REPL. The standard Python interpreter lets you run scripts from files or interactively execute code on the fly in a so-called read-evaluate print loop known as a REPL. While this is a powerful tool for exploring the language and discovering its libraries through instant feedback on your code inputs, the default REPL shipped with Python has several limitations. Fortunately, alternatives such as bPython offer a more programmer-friendly and convenient experience. You can use bPython to experiment with your code or quickly test an idea without switching context between different programs, just like an integrated development environment does. In addition, bPython may be a valuable teaching tool in either a virtual or physical classroom. In this course, you'll learn how to install and use bPython as your alternative Python REPL, boost your productivity thanks to bPython's unique features, tweak bPython's configuration and its color scheme, use common keyboard shortcuts to code more quickly, and contribute to bPython's open source project on GitHub. Before starting this course, make sure you're already familiar with Python basics and know how to start the standard Python REPL in the command line. In addition, you should be able to install packages with pip, ideally into a virtual environment. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Get started with bPython. Unlike standalone Python distributions such as CPython, PyPy or Anaconda, bPython is merely a pure Python package serving as a lightweight wrapper around a chosen Python interpreter. Therefore, you can use bPython on top of any particular Python distribution, version or even a virtual environment which gives you plenty of flexibility. At the same time, bPython remains a familiar Python REPL with only a few essential features such as syntax highlighting and auto-completion, borrowed from the full-fledged Python IDEs. This minimalistic approach contrasts with tools such as IPython, which is yet another alternative to the Python standard REPL, popular in the data science community. There are a few ways to get bPython onto your computer. Package managers such as Homebrew and APT offer pre-built versions of bPython for your operating system, but they're likely obsolete and hardwired to the system-wide Python interpreter. While you can build the latest bPython version from its source code by hand, it's better to install it into a virtual environment with pip. It's common to have bPython installed in several copies across multiple virtual environments. This allows you to wrap bPython around the specific Python interpreter that you use to create the virtual environment in the first place. Unfortunately, bPython isn't natively supported on Windows. This is because it depends on the Curses library, which is only available on Unix-like systems such as macOS and Linux. The official documentation mentions a workaround which relies on an unofficial binary for Windows, but it doesn't seem to work anymore. If you're on Windows, then your best bet is to install the Windows subsystem for Linux, known as WSL, and use bPython from there. Once it's installed, there are two different commands you can use to start bPython. Generally, it's preferable to choose the more explicit second command, which invokes bPython as a runnable Python module. This way, you'll ensure that you're running the bPython program installed into the currently active virtual environment. The bare bPython command can silently fall back to the program installed globally if there is one. It could also be alias to a different executable in your shell, taking precedence over the local bPython module. The Django web framework can detect bPython if it's installed in your virtual environment. 
The framework will automatically run bpython when you execute the shell command to bring up the Python interactive interpreter with your project files on the module search path. You've now learned how to install and run bpython as an alternative Python REPL, so it's time to explore its key features. Over the next few sections of the course, you'll discover several ways that bpython can increase your productivity as a Python programmer, regardless of your skill level. And you'll start out by looking at typo spotting. Spot typos at a glance. Compared to bpython, Python standard REPL is like an old black and white TV. It does the job of accurately conveying information, but sometimes you wish to see things in color for greater clarity. That's particularly important during code editing, where every detail matters. Therefore, syntax highlighting and bracket matching are perhaps the most common features found in any decent IDE or code editor. In bpython, you get both features out of the box, even though it's only a text-based user interface to the Python REPL. Colorful syntax highlighting helps you identify the structure of your code at a glance, while bracket matching makes it easier to keep the opening and closing brackets correctly balanced. As you type code into bpython, your instructions get tokenized into Python keywords, operators, comments, variables, and literal values such as strings, numbers, or booleans. Each token type has an associated color to let you quickly see what kind of language construct you're working with. This tokenizing and coloring isn't done by bpython directly, but by the pigments library used under the surface. Later, you'll see how to customize the color theme in bpython. In addition to providing syntax highlighting, bpython also lets you know if the opening and closing brackets in your code are correctly balanced. When you type a closing bracket, bpython will highlight the corresponding opening bracket and the other way round. And when you move your cursor to any bracket, it will highlight its corresponding one. This works with different kinds of brackets in Python, including brackets, braces, and parentheses. You can even nest them inside each other, and whenever you select one, bpython will highlight the other one that corresponds to it. In the next section of the course, you'll see how bpython can help you type more quickly and accurately. Type more quickly and accurately. When using the regular bpython REPL, your coding speed is directly limited by how quickly you can type and how well you remember the names of functions, arguments, and so on. bpython provides useful suggestions that you can apply at the press of a button with auto-completion. In addition, it helps you correctly indent your code and offers contextual history. All these features can save you a lot of typing and help avoid annoying typos, making you faster and more productive at work. As soon as you start typing something, bpython will look up Python keywords, built-ins, globals, and your current lexical scope, according to the LEGB rule to find objects with matching names. It matches names that begin with a specific sequence of characters, so typing more characters will narrow down the results. It will then display a list of relevant suggestions in alphabetical order. In this example, you're getting suggestions for the past statement, a few built-in functions such as print, and two user-defined variables called program and program scope that were defined earlier in the current global scope. You can cycle forward through these suggestions with tab or backwards with shift tab. This can be especially helpful when there's too much content to fit on your screen. Code suggestions also work in other places, a handy feature that you may use for type introspection to find out what attributes and methods are available in an object. But that's not all. Code suggestions go hand in hand with auto-completion, which is another useful feature in many editors, including bpython. 
Essentially, it can write the remaining code for you when there's no ambiguity about what you're trying to type. In this example, the correct variable, program, has been selected and can be completed by hitting enter. As you cycle through the available suggestions with tab or shift tab, bpython goes ahead and inserts the highlighted option into the python REPL. On the other hand, if there's only one suggestion left and you haven't finished typing the whole name, then you can press tab to have bpython automatically complete the remaining part, as seen here with print, which can then be completed by typing in the normal way. A lesser known fact about bpython's autocompletion mechanism is that it understands your file system. In other words, when you start typing a string literal that resembles a file path and you hit tab, bpython will list all the files and folders that match the string that you've typed so far. In the next section of the course, you'll see more ways that bpython can help you type more quickly and accurately. Auto indentation and contextual history. When you write long blocks of code in the Python standard REPL, you must correctly indent each line yourself. This can be tedious, error prone, and unnatural if you're used to writing code in a full fledged editor. Fortunately, bpython automatically adds the appropriate amount of indentation to the next line when you press the Enter key. The default indentation in bpython is four spaces, which complies with the Python style described in a document called PEP8. However, you can change the corresponding tab length option in bpython's configuration if you prefer a different indentation size. To exit the current block of code, you can hit enter without typing anything on that line or backspace. Either will reduce the indentation level by one. The standard Python REPL keeps an unlimited history of the inline instructions that you typed previously, even those from finished interpreter sessions. You can find your command history in a file named .python underscore history located in your user's home directory. On the other hand, your bpython history is stored separately in a file called .python hist and is limited to 100 lines by default, although you can increase that limit in the configuration. Despite these differences, both the standard Python REPL and bpython conceptually support the same basic commands to access the history. bpython also maintains a contextual history, with results depending on where you are in your code. You can browse the history by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. The up arrow goes back in time, and the down arrow goes forward in time, one line of code at a time. You can hit enter to confirm your choice and reuse one of the old instructions. Notice how the historical suggestions offered by bpython don't always follow their chronological order. Instead, bpython filters out suggestions that wouldn't fit the context on your current indentation level. Unlike the standard python REPL, in bpython history also comes into play when you start typing a line of code that's already been executed before. As soon as bpython finds a historical entry that begins with a matching character sequence, it will show a greyed out completion. You can accept it by pressing the right arrow on your keyboard to have it auto completed, or you can ignore it by typing something else over it. In the next section of the course, you'll take a look at how bpython can avoid you needing to switch to other applications during the course of development.